A physical exam of the dog starts within the waiting room, as the dog is being led to be weighed. The vet should examine its demeanour and gait. The vet should always approach the dog from the side. The vet may kneel down to the dog's level if necessary. Within the consulting room, the vet should assess the behaviour of the dog, as well as its respiratory effort and rate, whilst taking history from the owner. The physical exam of the dog follows the order of examining the head, body and then the tail. So examination of the head. The assessment of the head begins with examining the symmetry of the head musculature for any wastage. The nasal planum should be examined for any nasal discharge or bleeding. The nostril should also be observed for slight movement with respiration and any depigmentation or ulceration. Eyes should be examined for any discharge. The conjunctiva should be inspected by retracting the eyelid and rolling it backwards. Inspection of the third eyelid and identification of loose hairs should also be done at this stage. The sclera and cornea should be smooth with no ulceration. The pupils should be examined to be symmetrical and of appropriate size. The lens should be observed for changes in opacity and density. The anterior chamber can be observed for any material by looking side on and through the chamber. The E pinna should be examined for any scabs or erythema. Once done, the vet should inspect the inner E for erythema, discharge and a smell indicative of infection. The E should be gently lifted to straighten the E canal in order to look through with an otoscope. The lip can be lifted to examine the colour and tackiness of the gums. A capillary refill time test can be performed by placing gentle pressure on the teeth. The colour should return after two seconds. In order to look down the throat, the vet should place their fingers in the gap between the dog's teeth and a finger on the lower jaw to fully open the mouth. Examination of the neck. To examine the submandibular lymph nodes, the vet should place their fingers at the ramus of the mandible and filter this subcutaneous tissue between their fingers to locate it. For a large dog, it is approximately the size of a bean. The tissue of the neck should be examined for any skin lesions. The trachea, larynx and thyroid should be palpated. The thyroid should not be palpable in a healthy dog, whilst palpation of the trachea should elicit a single cough. Any more than that would be abnormal. Pain and discomfort of the neck should be identified by examining the range of movement of the neck. This can be done by holding the muzzle and lifting it up, lowering it to the ground and moving it to either side. Examination of the body. The body should initially be felt for any lesions in the right direction along the dog's back. The hair should be brushed the opposite way to expose the skin and identify for any skin changes and parasites. The body condition of the dog should be assessed by feeling the fat covering the ribs. As well as that, palpation and observation of a stomach tuck and waist are other methods of assessing body condition. The three lymph nodes that should be routinely palpated are the axillary, inguinal and prescapular lymph nodes. These should not be palpable in the healthy dog. To examine the perineurium, the tail should be lifted. It is also good to examine the vulva or the prepuce for any discharge or abnormalities. Moving on to the abdominal palpation. Internal structures should be palpated by placing a flat hand on the side 
and press slowly towards each other. The abdominal region should begin to relax under the tension of the palms. The loops of intestine should move up and down through the fingers and should be palpated for any abnormal masses. The bladder is situated cordially and should slip between the fingers. A distended bladder should feel like a balloon filled with water as it passes cranially and cordially between the fingers. The pancreas, stomach, kidneys and the tip of the spleen should be felt cranially. The liver should not be felt. The tip of the left kidney should be felt just behind the ribs, but the right kidney should be situated in the rib cage unless an abnormality is present. Moving on to the assessment of the limbs of the dog. Each pad should be examined one at a time for fissures, erythema or ulcerations. The range of motion of the joints should also be examined and palpated for any swellings. Auscultation of the dog. Auscultation should be done on a standing dog. It is important to palpate the point of maximum intensity to determine the heart rate. In large dogs, there should be three auscultation sites. The mitral valve should be felt at the fifth intercoastal area. The aortic valve can be oscillated more dorsocranially and the pulmonic valve more ventrocranially. The pulse should be palpated simultaneously. The tricuspid valve should be oscillated on the right side. In a normal dog, the heart rates are as follows. The large dog should be 70 to 90 beats per minute, and for a small dog, it'll be faster at 100 to 160 beats per minute. Here we want to palpate the jugular veins for any distension. The hepatojugular reflex can be assessed by placing pressure on the abdomen of the dog for intervals of 10 to 30 seconds. The respiration of the dog. Percussion should be performed over the lungs, cranially, caudally, ventrally, and dorsally. Furthermore, gut sounds should be examined to note increased or absence of movement. It is important to note that the normal respiratory rate is 10 to 30 breaths per minute for a dog. The temperature should be taken by placing the tip of the thermometer in the anus up against the rectal wall. Normal temperature for a dog is 37.8 to 39.2 degrees Celsius. In the examination of a cat, the cat's general demeanor should be initially examined with the vet standing behind or next to the cat. The body condition score of the cat can be examined by palpating the fat cover over the ribs, examining the thickening at the tail base and palpating and observing an abdominal tuck. The cat should then be placed on the scales and weighed. Examining the head of the cat. The head should initially be observed for symmetry and any muscle wastage. The skin around the preauricular region should be examined for any regions of alopecia or erythema. The vet should run their fingers along the fur of the cat's head to note for any skin lesions such as abnormal growths. And this is an image of the vet running the fingers through the fur of the cat. The eyes should be examined by lifting the eyelid to look at the conjunctiva third eyelid, sclera, cornea, pupil, and anterior chamber, similar to in the dog. The third eyelid can be prolapsed by placing the thumb over it and retracting the eyeball. The nasal planum should be examined for any evidence of ulceration or deep pigmentation as well as nasal discharge. The mouth should initially be examined for its color, tackiness, 
and capillary refill time should be also assessed. The gums should be assessed for periodontal disease, which is common in older cats. The mouth can be completely opened by grasping the maxilla, turning the nose to the ceiling and pressing down on the mandible with the other hand. The vet should examine underneath the tongue by pressing into the intermandibular space. The region of the neck should be examined for structures such as the larynx, trachea, thyroid gland and jugular veins. A thyroid flick should be noted by running the thumb and forefinger adjacent to the trachea and down to the region of the thoracic inlet. The ear should be inspected for any abnormal lesions with further investigation into the ear canal using an otoscope. Examination of the lymph nodes. Similar to the dog, the submandibular lymph node can be palpated at the ramus of the mandible by sifting through the subcutaneous tissue. It is common practice to palpate the prescapular lymph nodes in the region of the remnant clavicle. The popliteal lymph node can be found in the high nib between the bellies of the gastrocnemius. The inguinal lymph node and axillary lymph node should also be palpated but should not be felt in the healthy cat. This is an image of the palpation of the axillary lymph node. Auscultation. Auscultation is different to the dog in that it is done in the sternal and parasternal areas of the cat. The heart should be auscultated simultaneous with palpation of the femoral pulse. The normal heart rate for a cat is 120 to 200 beats per minute. And here's an example of auscultation with simultaneous palpation of the femoral pulse. Respiration. Auscultation of the respiratory system begins at the region of the larynx, throat and trachea. The cat should also be auscultated for lung sounds, cranial, caudal, ventral and dorsal along the thoracic cavity. The normal respiratory rate for the cat is 20 to 32 breaths per minute. Abdominal palpation of the cat. Both hands should be placed on either side of the abdomen and pressed gently and firmly together to palpate the contents of the abdomen. The right kidney may be palpated by placing a hand firmly against the caudal border of the ribs and grasping the abdominal structure. The left kidney is more dorsal and can be also palpated. Kidneys should be assessed for their size and smoothness as well as the presence of fluid or solid growths. In our mid-abdominal region, the intestinal tract may be palpated by sliding the lips ventrally and moving them dorsally. It may also be possible to feel for an enlarged mesenteric lymph node. The caudal edges of the liver and an enlarged spleen may also be palpable in the cat. The colon may be palpated in the caudal abdomen. The bladder may be palpated by supporting the weight of the cat in one hand and mobilizing it between the thumb and forefinger. The temperature should be taken by inserting a thermometer in the rectum against the rectal wall. Normal temperature for a cat is the same as the dog. It is 37.8 to 39.2 degrees Celsius. Examining the integument of the cat. A flea dirt comb can be used to comb out flea dirt and adult fleas. The contents should be removed and placed against white paper for observation. This is an example of combing the cats with a flea comb. The body of the animal should also be examined for skin lesions. The chin should be observed for feline acne. The integument of the ventral abdomen should be examined for erythema and the mammary gland should be palpated for any abnormal masses. 
examining the musculoskeletal system of the cat. Whilst the animal is in lateral recumbency, the digits and the skin of the foot pad should be examined, as well as the interdigital space and nails. Each joint should be palpated individually, and the range of motion should be assessed by extending and flexing the joints. It is also possible to palpate the muscles for any atrophy, masses or pain. And that ends the physical exam for the cat.